I'm Steve Millen. Welcome to this latest video of how I use the XO Photo Lab to edit my photos. Um, this is something a little different. Well, a lot different actually. I usually do wildlife and landscapes, but um, uh, recently I was doing headshots from a local football team, and um, when I came to do the editing, I just realised how um, what how good um, the AI masking was for doing stuff like this. Um, yeah it really helped so i thought i'd just go and show you you know how, how it can be used these is a few shots from early in the year that i did do my local uh, rugby team um, that I'm club photographer barrow raiders um so i go in one night and i'll just do the um, photos that they, so they can use on social media and things so these are the, just a selection a few of the photos that i took um so I'll start with this. So what I'd do is after the original, I'd go on one of the, like the first photo because they're all pretty much the same. You know, the setup, it's in a, well, I wouldn't say a studio. It's in a marquee uh, with, with lights set up in the background. But uh, as you can see, underexposed slightly this. So um, I probably should have done better on the night, but I haven't got a lot of time. They're not professional players. So they come in the... Um, train two or three nights a week and I had like half an hour before one of the training sessions to try and get um all the photos done of 20 odd players and home and away shirts so it was all a bit of a rush so I won't be too hard on myself not getting it spot on in camera so what I do I just say uh, it was underexposed maybe half a stop so I just go in I do all the sort of what I think need doing and all the global ex all the global settings shadows and things maybe and i maybe would up the shadows a little bit on that image but where it really helps is going in and doing the these the ai masking so i can say people so it'll go away and it'll detect the player ryan johnson and i'll say i'll do a background mask as well as you can see, if I hover over that, it's done a really good mask. It's even sort of managed to not, you know, to, to pick out the, the uh, behind there. So, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better mask, really, than that. It's, you know, I'm, I'd be more than happy with that. Right, first, what I'll do with first is the background. So I just want it, what I'm trying to do is just make it easier for the, the media team to use. What they'll do, they'll cut... I'll send them the JPEGs and they'll just cut the uh, the player out. They won't use the background. They'll just cut the player out. So I'm just trying to make it easy for them to cut the player out. So I just up the exposure on the background shadows, just so that the the player does sort of pop out of the uh, the background. And now the player, the mask on this one, um, the lighting on the player is not too bad. In fact, if anything, I might just up the contrast because you. Rugby players, you know, they need to look a bit tough. <laughs> right, so I just up the contrast on them, maybe, and, and maybe even just lift the mid tones on it. The shadow slightly. So what I, I just say, um, this is the first image. I say right, I, I quite like that. That I'm sure the media team would be happy with that. If I sent them that as a JPEG, they could quite easily cut that out and put it onto another background. So this is where it, this it really helps. So what I can do now is I can just say uh, I can I've got a shortcut set up. But if you just go image, copy correction settings on that image, and then if you pick, I mean if there was two hundred images that I needed to do, what I'd do I'd just pick all of the all the rest of the images, and then you just say image paste corrections paste all correction settings. So what I'll do now, it'll go away and it'll create them masks for the player in the background and, and add the settings that I've got, got on them. I mean, they're not going to be perfect. I mean, there he's got his hand a bit closer to the, the flash. So on this one, I might say, right, um, just on that image alone, I'd go into the player mask and I might just drop the highlight slightly just to bring this hand back a bit better and maybe even up the shadow slightly on, on the background I'd say is fine 
So if I go through most of these, they won't need a lot of work doing on them. That one maybe, maybe just up the shadow slightly on the player again. And then of course, I do all the um, cropping separate. So on these, I probably go as a three by two crop. I'm on a micro four thirds camera, so um, I get a four by three crop out of camera. But for these, I think a, a three by two probably would um, look better. This is sort of time. This is, I've, I have um, said about this before, whereas I'd rather have um, a slight board around my image when I'm working on it. So I, I'd like to have the image like that. I'd like to be able to set a border, but you can't do that in um, Portlab. I know you can in some other programs. So it would just be a matter of going through, like I say, quick 3 by 2 crop on these. I mean, I could even set the... I could have even done the crop on the first image and then just sort of manoeuvred it around. But as you can see, you can see what I'm getting at. It's, you know, it's it's quite a good way of just setting the masks up for you so you can go in it and then work on the players in the background separately. Um, I know people will be saying, well, why don't you use this? Why don't you use Photoshop and you know, that this will do it better? But I don't use it. I, I just use DX. So uh, I know one person said, why don't you... Um, just denoise all your images in DxO and then going to and then work in Lightroom or in Photoshop. But I just like to to keep my raw files. I don't like to start exporting as DNGs, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, I go into that view. I've got a filter on there. I did export uh, that image earlier, so I'll just knock that filter off. So that is the raw file. Um, so you can see it's 17 megabytes. And all I did earlier, I just exported it as a DNG. Um, well, I'll show you what I exported set up. Export as DNG with denoise and an optical corrections. So originally it was 17 megabytes, 17 and a half megabytes, if you look over here. And the DNG file is 76.8 megabytes. So, you can soon fill up your hard drive. So especially if you do wildlife and um, sport like I do, I mean, I can take, I'll be taking 1,500 photos at a football, a football match or a rugby match. And I usually keep about between 100, 150 images. So if you're doing that regular and you, you convert into DNG, I mean, you know, that's a raw file at 17 and a half megabytes. It's, you know, I'll just reset that. It might be different because I've got the crop. So I just reset that. No, it's, so it is, it's just 17 and a half megabytes. And that, the same image, exported as DNG, is 76.8. That's why I don't like exporting to DNGs and using other programs. I mean, I've I've always done that. I, I have been a Lightroom user in the past. I used Lightroom. Um, I didn't like the sub when they went to subscription, so I went away from them. Then I used Capture One. Um, that was you know I liked Capture One, but they were sort of pushing us towards subscription, and putting a lot of things in the program that I didn't use a lot. So this is when I, I looked. I had looked at DxO Photo Lab before, but I didn't like the way the uh, the mask masking worked. Um, I thought it was a bit fiddly. We had sliders actually on the photo that you used um, for the control points and things. But then I had another look a couple of years later. I think it was seven, was it, that I looked at where it had changed and it gone more like uh, with the sliders at the side for the for doing the um, corrections. And and that's when I thought, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and try DxO. And I, I just, I got the trial version, uh, tried it for a, for a month and I thought, yeah, that that's the one for me. I can just use, just save all my uh, my raw files. I don't have to start messing about with 
noise reduction and things and then exporting the DNG to use in Affinity or something so uh, that's why I went the uh, the XO Photo Lab way I mean I still do use it's like the keywording is not brilliant I have to do keywords when I'm doing my, my sport but I just go into Adobe Bridge for doing that Adobe Bridge is free it's an Adobe program um, but you don't have to subscribe to it it's free if you've got a Adobe account so I use that for doing my keywords but um, yeah, so went off on a tangent a bit there. Why I started using TXO, but yeah, that I, whether every people do actually notice or realize the difference in file size, it's like it's a lot from seventeen and a half megabytes, and you go to a DNG seventy six megabytes. So let's like say you can soon fill up a hard drive if you you're taking lots of photos. I mean. If you're landscape photography and you don't take, you know, you might go out and take 20 photos, you know, and uh, get it right first time. And that it probably doesn't matter to you. But, um, yeah, when you're doing wildlife and sport, it's a, it's a bit different yeah, when you're taking thousands of images all the time. Right. So uh, I hope that helps people out there. This, I mean, this technique that I used, you, you, you can use it for any sort of, you know, if you did a model shoot, if you were doing uh, portraits or something, you could, you know, the light and similar, you could sort of use it. I mean, because you've got a, a face detect as well. So if I open that up and um, not that I'd do it on these photos, but I wanted to do another mask and just say, let's see how it does on picking the face up. pick the face up so if I wanted to go in I know what a lot of people would do on faces they might sort of let's knock the make a contrast down on the face just to soften it a bit you know you can pick up hair see I wanted to lighten the uh, yeah, I'm on the hair mask there. I wanted to lighten the hair slightly. It, it, I mean, really good. So you could you could do that on the original, you know, the one, the first image, and then copy and paste the settings, and it, it'd take it over, and hopefully it'd pick up the face and the hair for you. And we'll have yeah, one more go. We'll let's see how it does on the clothes. Yeah, the clothes look all right. So if I, I could, uh, I don't know. Say right, let's make them reds. Let's play them in a green kit. <laughs> but um, yeah. So as you say, see that they, they they do work well. The the masking does work well. So um, just another idea of the sort of things you could use it for. Um, what I could do as well is you could set it up as a preset. If I'm doing headshot, a lot of headshots, if I'm going and taking headshots for a few different teams, you could sort of set up a headshots um, preset and, uh, you know, that would be handy doing that as well. So it's, it's just a matter of working out your own workflow, really. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope that helps anyway. I hope it gets you thinking of what you could uh, maybe use the new eye masking for and... Let's, um, if you have any um, suggestions of what I can do to help in the uh, future, just leave it in the comments below and I'll, I'll try and help. Right, thanks, bye.